grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. O God, hope and light of the sincere, we humbly entreat you to dispose our hearts to offer you worthy prayer and ever to extol you by dutiful proclamation of your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up, ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time, and said to the Sanhedrin, fellow children of Israel, be careful what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Thaddeus appeared, claiming to be someone important and about 400 men joined him, but he was killed, and all those who were loyal to him were disbanded and came to nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean at the time of the census. He also drew people after him, but he too perished, and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men, and let them go. For if this endeavor of all this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. They were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And all day long, both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. 
I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. The Lord be with you. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus said, have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had their fill, he said to his disciples, gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, this is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a line in today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles which I find very reassuring uh, and, and think about this, this, this verse often. Um, For if this endeavor or activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy it. I think of that line uh, a lot when uh, I see in the news stories of scandal uh, in the church. Um, I think of that line a lot when we hear of stories of priests who have disappointed us or members of the clergy or members of our faith that, that have dis who have been put in positions of leadership that, that have disappointed us. And you think um, the church continues to stand the church continues to exist, and really the, the church continues to grow, even though uh, all of this, that these attacks that we face both externally, but even internally. You know, I, I was a, a, a freshman in high school when the many uh, news reports had begun to come out in the early 2000s of all of the abuse crises is in, in the church. And, and I remember as a, as a young freshman in high school, in Cathedral Prep High School, being surrounded by great priests, Monsignor Calice, Father Fred Morano, my home pastor was, was a child growing up and 
was an inspiration to me and, and many other priests who I had known and, and grow to love and respect. And I was inspired by them, by their good example. Uh, and that was truly a part of my, uh, I think that was a truly a part of my vocation story, my awakening into thinking about uh, what is it that God is calling me to be in life, to do for his church, to do for the kingdom of God here on earth. And that was uh, part of what led me, uh, part of what led me uh, to be inspired by the good examples uh, of priests, uh, to be a good example of a priest for the church uh, and to be an inspiration of, to others. Uh, today, you know, I, I, I think of, of that quote, you know, um, if this activity is of human origin, it would have been destroyed. You know, we, we as a, a church at times, it almost seems like we do everything in our power to, to, dest to destroy our, our own church through scandal and, and through um, heinous crimes at times and through just terrible, terrible acts. But we know that our church is not of human origin. It's of divine origin. And uh, today, as I preach this homily and I reflect on on those words about the church being truly divine. Um, I invite, we invited today, this morning, um, a young man from my previous parish of Holy Child Jesus who uh, is discerning himself a vocation to the priesthood. Uh, and John Bulatow, this young man who's joined me for mass this morning in the sanctuary, um, please God will be entering the college seminary for the Diocese of Brooklyn uh, this coming September, the fall of, of this next year, uh, the fall of 2022. Uh, and so in, 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 in the example of John here present uh, and the example of the many men who are studying for the priesthood and in my own experience, in my own life, uh, I'm constantly reminded that our church is not of human origin. It is truly from the divine. And in that, it will never be able to be destroyed, ever, ever. No matter how hard uh, we are attacked externally or internally, no matter how hard the devil tries, we are a church that has been founded by Jesus Christ and is divine entirely. And we can take refuge in that. And there's nothing else like it. <laughs> what a beautiful gift it is to be able to belong to this divine, divine institution. What a beautiful gift it is to be able to participate with Almighty God each and every morning, each and every day, to be able to be nourished by him, to be able to be strengthened by him, to continue to give him glory, praise, and honor. Amen. We stand now and offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. <clears throat> We pray for our Holy Father and all who lead the church. May God bless them with strength as they care for his flock. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those in authority. May God infuse them with integrity and with the wisdom needed to guide those they serve. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who hunger physically, spiritually, or mentally. May God give them the nourishment they need. We pray to the Lord. We pray uh, for those in our faith community who have committed themselves to careers in service to others. May the Lord bless them and keep them safe. We pray to the Lord. We pray in, in a special way for an, an, an intention that was received via mail um, for a young woman who just turned 88 uh, Eleanor goes in house who celebrated her birthday this week for her uh, continued health and well-being and for the Lord's protection upon her. We pray to the Lord. And for Floor Lampert, for whom I offer this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers which we bring before you and answer them if they be in accord with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care, they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
promise that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please kneel.
have given them bread from heaven, containing in itself all delight. Let us pray. Lord, give to our hearts the light of faith and the fire of love, that we may worship in spirit and in truth our God and Lord, present in this sacrament, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus and the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be the, her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even until the end of time. Amen. 